Well, hello everybody, Bart here. It's been a few days since uh, <clears throat> we acquired this uh, 1988 Polish Fiat 126P and Alex and I have been pretty busy uh, already working on it, um, trying to improve its appearance, fixing small things and etc. So today, a short update of what we've done thus far and uh, walk you through some of the additional information that you might find useful. So let's start. As you will probably see, we started with a Polish license plate, um, help people basically understand what this car is. Obviously it says Polski Fiat on the front, but uh, I thought there's got a, there is a space for the uh, license plate, so might as well just do it. You can order these online, um, and I, we paid about $50 for this uh, custom-made plate. In Indiana, you don't have to have <clears throat> uh, front license plate, so you can put whatever the heck you want. Initially, I thought hey, maybe we'll just put uh, a, a Polish license plate from, say, this era, from, from the 80s, but I decided on this for now. I'm just gonna walk through the car from the front to the back. So first thing is, uh, we try to in improve the appearance of these bumpers. Um, first, I thought that they're just, uh, uh, the, the appearance of these bumpers is not good because they are um, gray as opposed to black. But then upon further reading, I found out that actually they're supposed to be, they call it an anthracite color, or anthracite, whatever the name of it is. So it's kind of a graphite color. So all we did is just to wax them a little bit so they shine up, but I'm glad I didn't just start repainting them because they're not supposed to be repainted. So that was one mod. Since we're on the front, let me po point you out to something here. Do you see on the front lights, uh, well, let me rewind. There is a propensity for these cars to develop a corrosion in the front compartment. One of the reasons is because of these gaps here. The air, the air rain mixture will just be falling here when you're driving at the you know breakneck speeds of 80 kilometers an hour uh, 50 miles an hour and then it will start dripping into the uh, compartment so in Poland when I was growing up you could buy these little frames and my dad actually had those installed so we bought those uh, and but we haven't installed them just to cover this up so the rain doesn't just jam uh, in there when you're driving and uh, you know corrode it further so that's one mod you might want to um, investigate, it'll just seal these gaps up. And I don't know what, if there's any disadvantages to having those, but if they are, well, <clears throat> I don't know of them. Then cleaned up the front compartment. As you can see, well, it's getting nice and clean, uh, maybe not pristine yet, but certainly better than what it was. What we did is we vacuumed everything there, we checked the battery, which I will tell you in a moment what you need to check for. There were some uh, bulbs that we had to reattach and everything, but here's a testament to the Italian-Polish engineering. After nearly 30 years, uh, this car had only one bur burn bulb, and that was in the instrument cluster, but all the lights and all the electrical system uh, worked perfectly, which I wish I could say that for about some other cars that are made these days. Um, so take it for what it's worth, but uh, we found the electrical system. Obviously it's dirt simple, so it's not that many things that can break, but there was really nothing wrong with it other than one burn bulb and a cluster, which I'll get to in a second. I am missing a few things. There's supposed to be a strap here. There's supposed to be a strap around the jack. Those are on order and one place that you can order a lot of these things are on Polish eBay. I call it the Polish eBay. It's called Allegro. And on that, you can find all these things for nothing. Uh, just give you an idea. I, I probably ordered 100 different parts, maybe 120 parts uh, from Poland. Uh, anything ranging from like these straps or or, or uh, wheel, wheel uh, covers to mechanical parts, you name it. And I think I spent total off fifty sixty dollars excluding shipping so it doesn't get much more affordable than only one of these cars um, spare tires in excellent shape you've got a spare toolkit in there um, 
just reinflated it so it's ready to go in case we have an emergency. Some of the older Fiat didn't have didn't have the, these uh, relays in here, and uh, they, it would burn the instrument cluster really fast. So it's good to either install them if you don't, if you have an older Fiat because otherwise the instrument cluster will burn burn up because you got a high currents running through the instrument cluster so that's one you can see uh, you know why this is an export model because for instance it's got that blower here the older models didn't have that the other part that you definitely need to fix I'm oh, sorry not necessarily fix but check is the battery or more specifically underneath it um, there is a tray underneath it and will corrode inevitably um, our had some surface corrosion so we cleaned it all up and prepped it and we'll probably get it repainted but check that vacuum all, all of the stuff underneath it so there's no more just loose corrosion laying around incidentally let me show you this is where the VIN number is on these cars uh, and it's one heck of a time to uh, get all of that uh, recognized by your insurance at least I had and in the uh, Indiana Department of Transportation somehow the VIN number would not match although even though it was perfect here so anyway uh, so that's kind of where we are with the luggage compartment. Uh, missing a just a few pieces. And I just have this. This is not a part of the car. I just have it here in case I have have to lay on the car and something breaks. I have something to... Uh, just a piece of foam. Um, yet to do is change the brake fluid. You know, that really needs to be changed. I just topped it off. But really, God knows when was the last time the brake fluid was changed. So we'll work with Alex on that one. So let's close this. Windshield wipers, change these guys. We put Bosch 13 inch windshield wipers on there. So 13 inch, you can buy them from AutoZone. Moving right along. Question for you YouTubers. I would like to take this mirror to repaint it or refinish it somehow. To, take, I, to do this, I need to take those two screws. In order to take those two screws out, I need to get into the behind of the mirror. So I need to take this. Where do I get the tool? To take these this uh, crank off apparently there's a fiat tool that you go in there that compresses something but I don't obviously have it so tell me what is the maybe that's a question for the for the fiat owners or uh, how do you guys take this this off so that I can take this panel off and get into my mirror screws uh, and take them off and refinish the mirror let's go into the interior the car has 58,000 kilometers and other than vacuuming the interior um, and just cleaning it up as you can see the gentleman that had it has had a uh, seat covers on it really didn't do much to it yet um, this car uh, has an instrument the newer style instrument class cluster it's called the FL facelifted version and in this particular instrument cluster um, well it has two light bulbs to illuminate it, right? They're right about there, okay? And this was the only bulb that was burned in this car, was a bulb back there. What, how you take it out? You take these two screws, lift this whole thing, uh, unscrew carefully the speedometer, and you can replace these bulbs and they sell them at AutoZone or whatever, the parts store. They're, you just maybe take the old one, take it to the store and they'll match something. They're like the push, the ones that you quarter turn, uh, take it out of the socket and you <clears throat> and you push the new one into the socket and, and reinstall it. Um, nothing we have done inside. This is, you know, this is the export model, but it's a pretty basic export model because we do not have the radio and we don't even have the cigarette lighter. That's something that if I can, maybe when I go to Poland, I can see if I can buy that somewhere where I could reinstall. It'd be nice to have a, like a charger for your iPod or something like this, because currently there's no way to hook anything to this car. <clears throat> Here we've got from the previous owner. Don't have to use, haven't had to use this yet. Check it out. All the bulbs for this car, um, and and some and some um, fuses, the old style fuses, the ones that are you know just. The, yeah, they're, they're tubular ones. This doesn't have the type of bulb that's in the instrument cluster, so I cannot show it to you. I wish maybe I kept the old one, but I threw it away. So, that's the interior. We removed, Alex and I removed the rear seat just to check if there's any corrosion um, there and just vacuuming and everything. 
uh, check the back window and everything. There really wasn't much other than surface corrosion. But uh, remove the, the seat and check and vacuum in there because there might be, well, I'll tell you in a minute, one mistake that I, I, I have done when I was working on this car. Fortunately, the, exp the mistakes are not very expensive. Engine compartment. Remove all the stickers and repolish this. I still have got this one wart here, but <laughs> there's not going to be that much I can do with it right now. Uh, other than maybe put a decal here or something temporarily and then later we'll figure something out. Let's go to the engine compartment. So we start cleaning it already. Hopefully you can notice that it's a little cleaner than before. We installed the fuel filter. That fuel filter is made by Fram and it, you can buy it for about five dollars in AutoZone. And uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you is there's two different school of, schools of thought. Some people put that fuel filter somewhere here or here and yeah, you know the original one is installed here and I kind of prefer this location because it filters the fuel before it gets into the fuel pump. I think hey, maybe that's a better deal as opposed to have it as opposed to have it here already that's after the fuel pump. So in other words, the fuel, fuel pump is getting filtered fuel here. Uh, so what else did we do? Change the spark plugs. And I did about quarter turn on each of these. And look, there's no more oil leaks from the valve cover. So that worked per very nicely. Um, change the oil and you can see, clean up the oil pan and everything. It's shaping up nicely. Not that many, there's no leaks. Let's put it this way, right now in the garage, knock on wood. Um, still haven't changed the oil uh, fuel, um, air filter because that I have to get from Poland and you can buy that on a leg or two for about a dollar. Shipping will probably cost you a lot more than the parts itself. That's really the only problem with getting the stuff from Poland is the shipping costs. Uh, but you know if you if you combine the stuff it might not be that bad. So that's the extent of the work in so far in the engine compartment. Um, on the, Over the weekend we'll try to adjust the timing here just to check maybe not adjust it but we we'll check and we changed the uh, oil as well uh, because we weren't sure yeah the condition of it and when was the change last and the bumper needs a little bit of work but uh, it's not too bad and let me show you underneath it now look the oil pan a little rusty may need to be repainted but this is dry and how did we fix it? All we did is around the perimeter we tightened all the screws. They were very loose, almost finger loose. So no wonder we were leaking all, all over the place. Once I tightened it, didn't even change the gasket. Voila, the problem solved. So try that first. Next, uh, change the f transmission um, oil. And we used Castrol ADW90. ADW90, and there's a drain. On the bottom you can see that and right under the half shaft there is a square inlet okay it's square um, but uh, what I'm what I'm saying is uh, you will not have a socket for this so you might have to um, so you might have to use one that is 13 millimeters and that'll unscrew as well and then the, the Drain is a is a hex, I believe. So that's that. And cars running great. Uh, oil we use just a regular mineral, uh, 10 W 10 W 30. Sorry, 10 W 40 oil. <sighs> Let me just finish this up by telling you something that you might want to look with respect to corrosion. That's really the last thing that I will tell you. You see in this video. You see there there were two there were two factories that this car was made in Poland one of them in Bielsko Biała and the uh, the second one in Tychy there is there is a school of thought that says that the ones from Tychy were better because they were better corrosion proofed and therefore didn't rust so much as you can see, and, and where the corrosions occur as I said in the first video is those door sills and as, if you look at this one there is no corrosion but how you can tell that this car was made in Tichy is there is a little bit of an orange peel on the bottom of that of that uh, door sill. And that's how you can tell where the car was made. So if you can, or if you subscribe to this conspiracy 
theor theory, you might want to look for the car that was made in Tychy. Maybe it will be better corrosion proof, but there's no guarantees. You know, it obviously it depends a lot on who you, who you uh, owned it and how they were stored. And, uh, you know, that probably has a lot to do with it, with it too. You take a car that was made in Tychy, but was outdoors and was driven in assault and everything. I'm sure there's going to be corrosion all over the place. So that's our update. Um, the next project will be, huh, let's see. I think we're gonna do the timing next just to verify this because the car drives great. By the way, the top speed with, with me and Alex in it and about a full tank of fuel was 115 kilometers per hour, which was actually more than, than the factory spec, which is 105. So we're very pleased with the, uh, with the performance. I will tell you one last thing here is um, the car may be low on power and low on everything, but for its age uh, and for its design, the handling, and I, I drive a lot of different cars, including exotics, for what it is, I think the car actually handles really well. It's got independent suspension, so good luck finding an American car, for instance, with an independent suspension from the 70s. Uh, they all drove, you know, like uh, sofas on springs. Uh, this car actually has a reasonably good handling, independent suspension, front and rear, um, and I think it handles and uh, actually pretty well for, for what it is, for a very popular economy car. Um, so that's I think where maybe the European cars do shine a little bit, uh, is, the, is the handling, uh, where they you know, obviously the lack is the power and, and, and the you know, amenities and everything. Uh, so that was very positively, I was very positively surprised by this as well. Um, and also pleased that you know so far everything was very inexpensive and simple and it's such a refresher you know coming from cars like BMW for instance uh, which I like for different reasons but you know it is a uh, always a, a challenge engineering challenge and, and mechanical challenge to fix things on these cars you know I have uh, uh, hundreds of dollars worth of specialized tools and equipment and laptops and electronics for diagnostics whereas on this car as they used to say it in Poland, if you do have a screwdriver and a 13 millimeter wrench, uh, pretty much you can fix half of the stuff on this car. And I can attest to this because multiple times we would uh, break down, uh, not multiple times, the car actually was very reliable, we would be owned, but, but there were a couple times where the car would, would, would give out and my dad would jump out, bring the factory toolbox out of the car, do something to it, and off we go. <laughs> I don't think you can do this anymore with cars. Now you can say, well, cars these days are reliable, they don't break down on the side of the road. That's true, but there's something to be said about the dirt, simple reli uh, simplicity of this car. Not reliability, but simplicity. Hopefully you, you, hopefully you enjoyed this video. There'll be more to come. Send us your comments and thank you for watching.